right, everyone. Um, never filmed anything like this before, like ad hoc, on the fly, outside. It's a beautiful day. It is stunning. It's like 84 degrees, no humidity. The dog is the dog is roasting himself right now, enjoying, enjoying it. I'm on a lunch break. Um, Want to talk about the Azure Stack HCI upgrade news that kind of came out in the last 24 hours. Um, so this is something that has been talked about for over a year. Um, what was going to happen, I guess not really over a year, since last November. Potato, potato. Regardless, what, what is the course of action that people can do to update from Azure Stack HCI 22H2 to 23H2? And up until yesterday, the answer is nothing. You have to start fresh. You have to have a brand new deployment. Moving those workloads over is really, really difficult. A lot of moving parts. So with yesterday's, um, with yesterday's uh, normal Patch Tuesday release, also um, Microsoft dropped a feature update for 22H2. And if you go into sconfig and you know do like show me Windows update or you do a CAU run or um, you know, WSUS, whatever. You're going to see a future update there now that's like, hey, update your 22H2 cluster to 23H2. Um, so before you go and do that, wait and stop. And we're going to talk about why you need to wait and stop. Um, this isn't like updating your Windows 11 laptop uh, to, you know, 24H1 or whatever you know, however they release those things now. Um, th th there's a couple of moving parts that need to be in place and validations that need to occur. So I wanted to take some time and talk about this. Um, if you're on sl the HCI Slack, um, there's a couple threads going with really good details and information from some OEMs, uh, or at least I, I should say um, some people that work for OEMs that have a little bit more visibility into this thing than the normal public. And the overwhelming consensus right now is just like pump the brakes and wait at least another week. Like, like, let's let's talk about what this is and what the steps are. Um, so first, um, let's talk about what a feature update is, and then let's also talk about the other things that need to occur to actually use all the cool new features and goodies you get in 23H2. Um, feature update, like like just said, is an OS upgrade. Um, if you're familiar with your Windows client OSs, um, it's the equivalent of going from like last year's version of Windows 11 to this year's version of Windows 11. You know, there's a little bit of a, a flippy floppy in the Windows folder and the root directory of the C drive, um, and everything's good. Your OS is updated. Congratulations. But that doesn't magically get you all the 23H2 things that are needed. Um, what I mean by that is like the, the ARC enabled goodness that comes along with it, the ARC resource bridge, um, that, that gets deployed in another step. So. This is Microsoft's, I'll call it step one, phase one. Uh, it's one of two, maybe three steps that are required to get you there. So obviously you need, you need to update the OS, but then there's going to be other things that happen later, a couple weeks, maybe less, um, that, that will light up those other bits for you. So why am I telling you to wait? The answer is pretty obvious. Um, no one's really used it yet. It's been out for 24 hours. It's been testing internal. It's been tested internally, and I'm sure the in-place upgrade works fine. Like the OS is going to function perfectly fine. But if you are using uh, validated hardware for an OEM that maybe is a couple years old, you probably should pump the brakes and reach out to them to see if that hardware will even work for step two and step three. So that's going to be things like are the network cards still supported? Are they on the HCL, the hardware compatibility list uh, for 23H2? Um, do, if, is there any nuance with maybe like uh, driver or firmware versions that aren't vetted for 23H2? So like not just the hardware, but the, the version of drivers and firmware that you're running. Um, th that's just one example. Like network, network stuff is always the thing that seems to whack me in the face. So probably a good place to start. Obviously, you got to worry about storage and, and a few other things that, that need to be validated, but those are the primo, primo things I would be checking for. So go reach out to your OEM and find out if the solution hardware you have will be uh, supported. So for anyone that's not using like an OEM validated solution, maybe they're home labbing it, maybe they're running it on uh, 
uh, inside a VM, which we're not even going to cover in the scope of this. But if you are if you are doing this, bees flying around, geez, Louise. Um, if you are if you're doing this as like a DIY type of thing, or you're reusing old hardware, um, you know your mileage may vary. Uh, there's no guarantee that the subsequent updates are going to work. I can tell you personally that my home lab, um, I was able to to get it to to do the OS upgrade fine, but I have no promise that the uh, that the, the solution upgrade that part two uh, is going to to work. Um, I have a feeling it will because I was able to install 23H2 vanilla on my home lab hardware. So like, I know that's going to be fine, but there's no guarantee that any of the validation checks that need to occur will work. So again, your mileage may vary if you're DIYing it, home lab in it, just be aware about that. Okay. Uh, let's talk about what that step two and maybe step three is, but we'll just talk about step two for now. The, the subsequent steps after the OS upgrade. So that isn't out yet. That hasn't been released. Microsoft hasn't really given any information on it. I'm sure there's gonna be a blog post about it. I think the documentation may make some mentions, but that part two is something called a solution upgrade. Um, and if you're familiar with 23H2 brand new deployments, you've seen that term tossed around. Um, if you're not familiar with it, um, there's a billion other articles and blogs and videos out there that, that go into great detail about what a solutions upgrade, a solution upgrade package is, um, what that means if you're working with an OEM. Um, for, for just simplicity's sake, the way I've been explaining it to newbies that maybe are coming over that aren't experienced in this ecosystem or they're brand new VMware people that are trying to get over onto something else after Broadcom, uh, the Broadcom disaster. Um, solutions upgrade, I've been explaining it very, very simply like this. And it's, don't make fun of me, don't smack me for using incorrect terms, but I try to explain things like I'm talking to my father that may not understand this stuff. Um, it's basically a, uh, a package of workflows and validation steps and security settings, possibly drivers, possibly firmware, uh, and, and validated configurations, basically like a desired state of hundreds of checks and validations that need to occur and things that need to be installed to get your 23H2 OS, remember phase one, the OS, to get that to a uh, approved state for it to be managed in the cloud. You probably, your eyes are rolling in the back of your head like, why is this even a thing? Why is Microsoft doing this? What was wrong with the old way? The, the short answer is supportability, right? Like 23H2 is no longer just an operating system. It is a full-fledged solution. It is not an appliance because we don't like that word. Uh, it is a solution. It is not just the OS. It is not just a hypervisor. It is all the bells and whistles you get with this product from Microsoft. And what that is, um, again, talked about it ad nauseum, but it's basically the ability to manage things through the ARC resource bridge, also known as the ARB or ARB, depending on how you want to say it, uh, the ARC resource bridge. Um, there's a host of microservices and other things that get deployed during the solutions upgrade installation. Um, that would include uh, some cluster resources that manage, uh, you know, the, the, how the hypervisor interacts with the ARB, like make VM, attach disk, things like that. Um, but then there's also the capability of like managing things like uh, networks from the cloud. So anything you manage through the portal. Um, and then obviously those, those fancy, shiny things, those, those branding products that you can deploy now to your uh, HCI cluster, like AVD uh, or AKS Hybrid, uh, any of those, any of those things. Also, managing like uh, your cluster upgrades through uh, Azure Update Manager or uh, AUM. So, so the, the very, very small handful of many things that you can do with with 23H2. But those are things that need prerequisites to be in place, and those prerequisites are typically delivered and serviced through a solutions upgrade. So, part two. So that solutions upgrade, if you've never done it before, if you've never done a fresh install of 23H2, that solutions upgrade can be a bear if you don't have your ducks in a row. Admittedly, we don't have a video on this yet, uh, but like I said, there's a ton of other folks that have, have talked about it. It's been out in the wild since the uh, beginning of this calendar year, like around January, February, I think. I forget when the release date was, uh, when it went GA, but um, that, that validation process, 
checks for checks for things like, um, and this is just vanilla in Solve 23H2. It checks for things like making sure your network cards are on the same driver version, firmware version, making sure your BIOS is up to date, making sure you're not using out of box drivers, making sure your um, you know, the naming conventions that you chose for your adapters are the same. Uh, making sure the disks that you have for your storage all match and there's symmetry across all, like anything and everything you can think of that has ever caused you grief with storage spaces direct since 2016. Um, just imagine validations upon validations, validations to reach out to like internet endpoints to make sure that the communications to these things in the cloud work so you can manage it in the cloud. Um, there is a ton of steps. I, I, I don't know the exact count. I want to say there's like 260 something based on just like expanding open the little web UI collapsible thing. Uh, but there are a lot. Now imagine that's for a vanilla install. Now we need to do validation on a existing cluster. That existing cluster didn't have any validations. Wild West. As far as Microsoft is concerned, you could have done some crazy crap and overwritten, you know, best practices with raw PowerShell, just brute forcing your way through it, S2D installation and getting HCI registered and I'm done, it's up, it's and you walk away. So like obviously misnamed things are gonna have to be checked. You're, you know, all the things I mentioned before, storage, network cards, blah, 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 blah. All that needs to be like, needs to conform to what they want but it's also gonna check whatever workloads you have on there. And a lot of people were running 22H2 back in the preview days of things like uh, uh, the, the, the preview version of Arc Resource Bridge, ARB, the preview version of the VM lifecycle management tools and stuff like that. Uh, early versions of AKS hybrid. Um, there, there's, a, there's a laundry, uh, not a laundry list, but there is a pretty darn big, list of things that just aren't GA anymore, are not supported anymore because they were preview, and you're not going to be able to move them over. Period. End of story. They need to be uninstalled. They need to be removed. They need to be completely gutted out of your 22H2 cluster before you can validate and move on to the solutions upgrade on 23H2. So again, that, that OS upgrade may work for you. Again, this is why I'm saying just pump the brakes and, and get your ducks in a row. That OS upgrade may work for you to run those old workloads, but the solution upgrade ain't. And if that doesn't work, you're kind of in this limbo state now with 23H2, unsupported stuff, Microsoft support's not gonna help you. So go check what your workloads are. Go make sure that you don't have any preview stuff that is no longer supported or has reached end of life, or maybe it's had a major change. Um, and work with your hardware vendor. If you're using one, I sure as hell hope you are. Uh, and work with your hardware vendor on what those steps for, for getting your validated uh, product to the next OS uh, solutions upgrade is. Um, we can talk a lot about how to maybe migrate your unsupported AKS workloads to something else in the meantime as a lifeboat. Um, but I think that's far outside the scope of this, 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 this video, this conversation. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to bring up is um, this officially starts the clock on 22H2's uh, supportability lifetime. So like Microsoft has always followed this best practice, it's not a best practice, but they followed this pattern of saying, hey, uh, new release came out, you got six months before the old thing, we ain't supporting it anymore. So that's what's happening here. Um, as of yesterday, you got six months to to move your stuff off 22H2, like period, end of story. Like, yeah, yeah I guess in six months it'll still like run, but you're not gonna open up a ticket and they probably aren't gonna help you. Uh, and you certainly don't wanna really push this off for five and a half months because you don't know what problems may occur at that point. So work with your hardware vendor, come up with that migration plan. And uh, you know, let, let's, uh, let's hope to God you get, you get in a good place. I feel like every time I say one last thing, there's really like three more last things and they keep coming to my head. Uh, so the, the one thing that this solution upgrade is not going to do day one for you is it's not going to hydrate your existing VMs into Arc Resource Bridge and then project them into the cloud. And that may or may not be a big deal for you. Um, for people who want the full experience of the 
solution, right? Like the whole thing that they're paying for. I want to manage all my stuff through the Azure portal. I want to deploy things through uh, bicep templates and this and that. If you have existing VMs, like, I don't know, maybe you were running some VDI workloads or doesn't matter. doesn't matter what they are. If you have VMs that exist on your 22H2 cluster and you do this uh, OS update, this feature update to 23H2, they'll carry over. But then when you do the solution upgrade, right, to actually get it onboarded, even if you pass validation and everything's happy and network ATC installs and all the happy things go, um, those VMs are not going to magically start showing up in your Azure portal, nor are your logical networks, doesn't know they exist, nor do your storage paths. So basically, you need to configure all these things in the portal first. And then Microsoft is going to give you a way to hydrate those VMs, those workloads one by one, or I guess you can script it through PowerShell in a bulk session, but you can, you know, one by one type thing um, to, to get them to project. So again, just full disclosure, those things are not going to happen for you. You need to absolutely be prepared mentally and physically for this. Uh, otherwise, you, you're, you're going to waste a lot of time your time other people's time just just asking why isn't this working the way i think it should so you know again work with your oem work with your hardware vendor uh come up with an action plan make sure that the stuff can even update to 23h2 like it's supported and then come up with a uh, migration plan to decommission any crap that isn't supported and then obviously post solutions upgrade be prepared that there may be a delay. It's not going to happen like the same day this PowerShell commandlet or however they're going to allow this hydration to occur isn't going to happen day one. So you may have this limbo period of just uh, waiting for that to that hydration command to be available. So again, maybe best just to wait a little bit if you want those features. Anyway, uh, hope hope this is helpful. Hope this is insightful. I hope I haven't given anyone uh, severe anxiety about it. Um, this has been a long time coming. Microsoft has been working on this, um, this, this validation and, and upgrade process for Lord knows since GA. So months, eight months, seven months longer. So it, it, it's about damn time. We're getting this. It's a good thing. It's a very, very good thing. Um, I can tell you I've been using 23H2 in my home lab. And while there are some, um, aggravating things about it when it comes to like, I'm used to having control, like absolute control over how fast something can get deployed. I'm used to using my own scripts. I'm used to using this and that. Um, a lot of the scripts I, I, I used in the past didn't cover a lot of things that best practices, security policies, the things that come out of the box of 23H2 um, didn't cover them. And I am ecstatic that these things are, for lack of better words, being forced upon users because it's only going to improve your security posture and your supportability posture. It's going to you have a problem, you open up a ticket with Microsoft, they're going to know what they're dealing with. They're not going to be dealing with some Wild West configuration that they want to slam their face into a keyboard and ask, you know, why Why are you opening this ticket up? So really cool stuff, really excited. Um, can't wait to hear some feedback. Can't wait to see some stories that come out of the field about this, this upgrade process. Um, and I hope, this, I hope this little video, which probably is much longer than it should have been now, uh, helped you get there.